I absolutely love the Italian tradition of starting a meal with an antipasto platter. Your guests can nibble away on delicious little morsels while the final touches are being done to the main meal. In this video, we're going to discuss my top tips for putting together a beautiful antipasto platter. This might look like a whole bunch of different ingredients, but I can assure you that each one has been carefully thought out. Let's go through what we have. Over here we've got some roasted red capsicum, some green olives, we've got a Mazdam cheese, sliced ham, prosciutto and salami, a cracked pepper pate and some beer sticks. And over here we've got some sesame bread sticks, a red pepper spread, mini bread cheese, a blue cheese, some wafer crackers, sun-dried tomatoes, baby gherkins, a fresh basil pesto and a loaf of bread. My top tip for any platter arrangement is to create variety. Variety in shape, flavour, colour and texture. You'll notice I'll keep referring back to this as we put this platter together. I'm going to use this large serving board today and before we begin it's a good idea to have everything out where you can see it. This makes it easier to visualise how it can be arranged. Let's think about our starting point. I'm going to start with a few smaller bowls for the wet ingredients. Odd numbers of items are more pleasing to the eye, so I have five smaller bowls to play with. I think this arrangement will give me a good foundation. Then I like to move on to the cheese because it's one of the main items. Let's look at the selection we've got. A round brie cheese, a triangular blue cheese, and over here we've got this more square shaped semi hard Marsdam cheese. The round brie is a soft cow's milk cheese with a white rind. The triangular shaped blue cheese is semi soft with a sharp salty flavour. And the Marsdam cheese is a semi hard cheese with a mellow nutty flavour. So this gives a great variety in shape, flavour, colour and texture. You can pre-cut the cheese if you want to. It's a great idea if you don't want to serve your platter with cheese knives. For this circular cheese, I like to cut it into equal pieces and then fan them out into a circle. If you've pre-cut your cheese, fanning is the key to better presentation as it creates some depth and dimension. When thinking about the positioning of the cheese, I'm making sure those that need to be cut are near to the edge of the board. It makes it difficult for your guests to cut it if it's positioned in the centre. I'm also going to cut the mouse down in half so that I can create a little height by overlapping the two pieces. Notice how I've staggered the three cheese positions? They're not all together in one spot. I also don't want the square pate to be next to the square mouse down cheese, so it's going on the opposite end. Next we'll fill the little bowls. This is where you need to think about the variety of colours. Don't put all the reds and all the greens together. Don't put all the spreads and dips together. Mix them up, it makes it more functional and it looks more appealing. Sometimes people wonder what the difference is between an antipasto platter and a charcuterie board. A charcuterie board focuses mainly on the meat selection where Antipasti offers a much larger variety of ingredients including vegetables and cheese. Antipasto is the singular term, while Antipasti is the collective plural. So this is an Antipasto platter made up of different kinds of Antipasti. Dips, spreads and pesto are incredibly easy to make yourself. You can generally put all the ingredients into a mini blender and blitz it all together. I'll leave the ingredients for the red pepper spread and pesto in the description below and the full recipes are in my latest free newsletter. The sun-dried tomatoes could go in a little bowl but I quite like to drain them on some paper towel and then add them straight to the board. Now we can start adding the meat. If you take it straight out of the packet and put it on the board, the pieces will be stuck together and flat looking. So take the time to fold or twist the individual pieces to create height and intrigue. 
it will definitely add to the visual appeal of your platter. If you arrange them loosely, it will also make it easier for them to be picked up off the plate. Add each meat in at least a couple of different spots on the board. It mixes up the colours and adds to the visual side of the platter. Notice the different meats I've chosen for this platter add to the variety in colour too, as well as giving your guests a nice selection. Remember, you can make a platter like this ahead of time, but make sure you take it out of the fridge at least 30 minutes before you intend to serve it, so that the items can come to room temperature. Before I add the last two meats, I'm going to add the bread. Bread is great for filling in larger gaps on the board. This is a sourdough loaf, and I'm cutting it into smaller pieces. Once again, I'm fanning out the slices because it looks better. I'm putting it in a few places on the board to fill in the gaps, but also so it can be reached from any side. Then I'm going to add the sesame sticks and wafer crackers. These make a great base for the delicious anti-pasty toppings. We've got a good bread variety here too. Long, crunchy breadsticks, small, crispy wafer crackers, and soft, fresh bread. They look different and taste different. It's a perfect variety. When your platter gets to this stage, you're really using the remaining ingredients to fill in the gaps. I'm loosely folding the salami and rolling it up a little. Don't you think they look great like this? And it's not really much extra effort. I've kept the most expensive item for last so that it isn't hidden. I'm loosely bundling up each piece of prosciutto to give it some shape and volume. I love how this is coming together. Of course, the final touch is adding a garnish. Fresh herbs and edible flowers are perfect for this. We eat with our eyes first, so any effort you put in to arrange the items artistically and any garnishes you add that enhance the visual appeal are absolutely worth it. Can you see how a variety in colour, shape, texture and flavour all combine to make a perfect platter arrangement? If you're looking for some more platter arrangement ideas, watch this video where we talk more about specific tips to keep in mind when putting together a cheese board. See you over there!